Hey guys, welcome back to another Real Time Revision. This is Brad Reed with the Inside Creative Writing Podcast. And today I wanted to return again to the uh, the kill list. So that's what I've got up on the screen here, Brad Reed's kill list. Again, a little, a little dramatic sounding, but uh, these are the words that must fight for their lives to remain on the page. These are really the things that uh, make the difference between what feels like a rough draft and a polished piece of writing. Not entirely, right? But these are some key pieces of that. So um, over the past few months, I've explored a lot of these different kind of words and kind of led you through um, why they make our writing feel a little bit clunky and how to get rid of them. I wanted to do some that are a particular uh, problem in my rough drafting, drafting. And these are these directional words here, up, down, back, around. On their own, they seem pretty innocuous, right? What, uh, what does it matter if we have a few of these sprinkled in? Well, I wanted to take a look at my writing and see, um, see how much of a problem these are and see how we can clean these up. Notice I just said up, right? How we can clean these up. And that's where the... Um, the problem with these words come in. They're extra words that we tend to throw in there because that's the way we speak. But once we get rid of them, we can see how it tightens up our writing and makes it feel more uh, concise and more urgent. So I'm going to go ahead and click over here to my draft for Crossing Cascadia. As you can see, I've already searched for up over here. Um, 664 um, places where up is. Now it's not quite that many because you can see that it's flagged the up within supplies here. But I just want to go through a few of these and see if I can figure out how to get these out of my writing and see if it cleans it up a little bit. So we'll start here with the first one. Phil stood up and walked over to his supplies, pulled out an old pot. Now notice a lot of, in a lot of these cases, we can just get rid of this word up, right? So Phil stood and walked over to his supplies, works better. It may seem like a little thing, but again, these are those words that once we get them out, the writing feels a little more polished. And we've lost an extra word here that now our reader doesn't have to put up with, and it sounds more polished. Phil stood, what other way is Phil going to stand than to stand up, right? So we, we can lose that. Phil stood and walked over to his supplies. We're going to ignore supplies because obviously that is um, not one of the words up. Here we have supplies again. Here we go again. After we finished eating, the silence became unbearable. I couldn't tell whether Phil was expecting me to just get up and leave or if he was actually enjoying having some company for a change. So get up and leave. Obviously, if uh, she's thinking about leaving, she would have to get up in order to do it. We're going to assume she's not going to crawl or scoot along in her chair or something like that. So this up flags us to some language that we don't need in here. I couldn't tell whether Phil was expecting me to just leave or if he was actually enjoying having some company for a change. So the writing's tighter, it's shorter. We're asking less of our reader to do here. Um, let me click here so that it doesn't set back. All right. Um, had I been dead? Had Phil brought me back to life? How was I to know? I ended up focusing on that moment right before everything went black. So up is almost always a signal word to where it's trying to prop up another word um, that is uh, where there should be a different word there, right? So I ended up focusing on that moment right before um, everything went black. Usually I can lose this, right? Because we also, in one of the previous things, we talked about getting rid of this ing word and look how this ended up is propping up the ing for focusing. What I'm trying to say here is I could just say I focused on that moment. So now I've lost two other words and I've lost that um, ing word which we want to lose too. I focused on that moment right before everything went black. I'm going to lose that because this is another word that isn't doing any good. I focused on that moment before everything went black. Of course we know it's right before. Yes I had felt at peace but it didn't feel like the kind of peace that came from God. There was no tingling up my spine. Now sometimes we do need these uh, directional words, right? Because this, I want this to feel like this tingle is, is coming from the bottom of her body and rising up through to the top of her body. Um, but this ing again warns me that this might be a propping word that I don't need, need in here. There was no tingle in my spine, not really losing much langu language there. Um, the feeling tingled 
my spine or see those aren't working so usually I'll try to reword these a little bit without the directional in there and uh, this would be a case where this word fights me and proves that it probably does belong on the page at least for for this moment so we're gonna let that one live for now let's jump ahead and see if we have a few more my loving God the one who had a wonderful plan for my life hadn't shown up um, this is one where it could probably stay, but I, I don't, the more I look for these little words, the more they annoy me. So this is an up I want to lose because this is just kind of a lazy way to say this hadn't shown up, hadn't arrived, hadn't revealed himself, something like that. My loving God, the one who had a wonderful plan for my life was a no show, was, wasn't, wasn't there. Um, let me slip past that moment into oblivion. My loving God, the one who had a wonderful plan my, for life, my life. And I'm just going to say was absent. Now I may go back and change this at some point, but I've lost that up, lost a word, and I've made this uh, much more intentional uh, language here. Let's see if we can do one more, and then maybe we'll jump ahead and look at some of the other directional words real quick. So supplies, it's flagged again. Um, taking you to Corvallis, you reached in the tent, slid out the sleeping bag, and started rolling it up on the ground. So this is the way we talk, right? Roll that bag up. Um, we're not doing anything up, right? I don't know how that up gets in there. All we're doing is rolling it, right? Uh, so sleeping bag and started rolling it. Um, started rolling it on the ground as I ate scrambled eggs. So this up is trying to suggest that we're putting it away, right? That we're rolling it um, together. Uh, so this might need a different word here because this sounds like she's just, or that he's just literally like kicking it around on the ground and rolling it um, and started packing away, packing it away, slid out the sleeping bag and started to pack it away. So even there, I want him tempted to use the word up to pack it up. As I ate scrambled eggs, pack it away. Away is just kind of doing the same word as up here, so that might be one I come back to. But uh, this is the the wrestling we want to do, right? This word by word, sentence by sentence wrestle to get these um, to get these sentences to shimmer, right? To feel polished. Let's go back to the kill list. So we've got up, down, back, around. Let's look at a couple of down. Uh, words here and see if the same thing is happening. So we're going to change this to down and um, go to the next one here. It was an obstacle course. Trees intertwined across the highway with others threatening to come down on top of us in any moment. So this is definitely a directional word, right? The trees are up in the air. They're coming down. So I could uh, lose all of this and make this more descriptive by just saying fall, right? With others threatening to fall on top of us, where else are they going to fall but on us? So trees are trying to cross the highway with others threatening to fall on us at any moment. Shorter, more powerful, more descriptive. Right? Come down, what does that mean? No, they're falling. Uh, the ones left standing created a canopy over the road that kept what little sunlight there was from reaching down to us. Of course, sunlight is coming down, so we don't need that down to us to prevent whatever sunlight was was reaching us, right? We lose two words. We make it um, more concise, more powerful. Let's try a couple more. It was hard to tell if the road had been washed down the hillside. Um, this one is directional, right? The hillside is up and then it is down after it is washed. So for this moment, that one's going to stay, even though I'll come back later and try to um, see if this is suggesting that washed. Is, see if I can find basically a verb that's going to include this idea of down, right? Cascaded uh, still needs down. Uh, down the hillside or if it had just been buried by tons of earth that had come down from above. So here I have washed down and come down within the same sentence. Uh, so I definitely want to get rid of one of the two of those. So let's see if I can get rid of this one. Or if it had just been buried by tons of earth that had um, come down, again, fallen from above it. Now we don't need it. 
or if it had been just buried by tons of earth that had fallen from above. Lost that other down, made that more succinct and shorter. So let's uh, let's go back here to our directional words. Up, down, back, around. Oh, back is one that kills me. I have a feeling we're going to have boatloads of this word back in here. Uh, another crash of glass made me scream and I jumped back from the car, right? Uh, jumped away from the car, jumped from the car. If I leave just jumped from the car, it implies that she was inside the car and maybe jumped out of it. Uh, jumped away from the car. Another crash of glass made me scream. Uh, I don't even think we need to know that she jumped back from the car, right? And she, and I jumped. Boom. There we go. Shorter. Uh, got rid of that back and made it more intentional. You shoulder past me, pop the door open and click the button to raise the back door. So this is a different version of back, right? This is modifying which door this is. So that's fine. See what's back there. A lot of times stuff in uh, dialogue, I'll leave because that's the way the people speak, but I'll come back at some point and make sure this is intentionally the way that Phil would speak or if he would have a different way of saying this. For now, this is kind of placeholder dialogue until my third pass through of revision where one of my focuses is to really make the dialogue unique to each of the characters. Um, I didn't find, okay, so he said better be something, nothing much in the other two. Um, I didn't find any food back there. So here's an echo of this back there. They're basically looking in the back of a car, I think, for food is what's going on here. See what's in the back. Um, in fact, I like that better. See what's in the back. Uh, nothing much in the other two. I didn't find any food. Uh, so we already know that she's looking in the back, right? Because we have that right here. Better be something, nothing much. I didn't find any food there. So we can lose the back because we are, oh, I don't know what I did there. We can lose this back because we already have the information. I didn't find any food there. Uh, should we do one more? Um, he got out of the minivan, the door hanging open, and came around to the back. Again, this is a description of a piece of the car, so it's not being used the same way. Phil said, let's get moving, and leaped over the tree. I looked back at the cars. Um, so this is, uh, again, directional. I'm trying to get that idea that she's now moved away from the cars and she's taking a moment to, to look back at them. Um, and I, I think this works okay, right? It's not imperative that we get rid of all of these. We just want to make sure that they fight for their place on the page around. This is one I don't typically, for whatever reason, spend that much time searching for or thinking about as I'm writing, even though I have... 211 examples of around in my draft. I'm going to go again, kind of hit here to the middle just to see what uh, what comes up. Phil hadn't even looked back. He was almost out of sight now, disappearing around a bend in the road. Um, this one, I feel like it works okay. Um, a lot of times these are, for me, describing movement. Um, which is different than like, um, you know, that word up the way we saw that used earlier. He was simply, he was simply, whoops, we traded places. I followed 10 yards. He simply stepped, can't lose that was. He simply stepped over much of the debris. I would have gone out and around. Um, so here I have two words that seem to be doing the work of one. I'm just trying to describe that she's, um, going out and around those <laughs> things. So those are the first words that come to mind, which is how they ended up in my draft. He simply stepped over much of the debris that I would have. See, the only words that are coming to me are words like circumvented, which is much too heavy of language for this character to be thinking. She wouldn't think in a term like circumvented. She would probably think in a term like out and around. So uh, at this point, I'm going to let that live on the page. Let's see if I can find a good example of when around is not working. 
He snored heavily as I got up and clanged the pot around, hoping he'd wake up and make breakfast. Okay, so here's a here's a perfect example, right? Um, I got up and clanged the pot around. What does that mean, to clang the pot around, right? You have to invent that in your mind for what that is. So I want to make this more descriptive, because that's really what this is calling for. Um, so he snored heavily as I got up and clanged the pot um, against the fire pit stones, right? I don't know that I'll leave that, but I think this is enough um, to kind of illustrate the point that I'm making here that I, uh, now you can visualize this, right? Instead of clanging the pot around, what does that look like? What is she clanging it against? What does it sound like? Now we know I got up and clanged the pot against the fire pit stones, hoping he'd wake up and make breakfast. So much more descriptive, much more visual. Um, so anyway, that's my directional words on my kill list, up, down, back, around. You can probably see that up is the one that is um, that creeps into my writing most of the time, that I have to do the most work to clean up. Down is probably second. Um, and then back and around are in there quite a bit. So uh, a couple more words to kind of look for in your own draft and hopefully some hints on how to get rid of those and uh, maybe more importantly, the why and how to get rid of those. So again, thank you so, so much for being a member of the Patreon team. Um, I'm really enjoying putting these together. If you ever have... Uh, questions of things that you'd like me to go over um, in these real-time revisions, or even another sort of reward that I can make available to you as supporters of the show, I would be more than happy uh, to hear from you guys, because um, I want you to really find value in these. So never hesitate to uh, shoot me an email at bradreed at bradreedwrites.com or head over to the website bradreedwrites.com. Click on that talk to us link and uh, several ways that you could get in touch there. So again, thanks. Uh, there's our real-time revision for this week. Hope you enjoyed that and we'll be back next week with a new one. Thanks. Bye-bye. <laughs>